for example, if um, you are supplying um, 100 kVA to a facility which has a varying uh, load of from 20 kVA to 80 kVA, you could manage your energy bill um, uh, through such intelligent devices as you know UPS optimization paraphernalia, which would allow you to uh, actually utilize your load very efficiently and intelligently. So there will not be any wastages through you know intelligent use of energy. It would know when to use that 20 kVA and when to use that optimum level of uh, 100 kVA. Yes, we've recently done a soft launch of a green ATM. Uh, now this is very interesting because why we have targeted the ATM? It's because of the fact that ATMs run 24 by 7 unlike some of the workstations or printers or stuff like that you know uh, where they use uh, uh, workstations for about uh, 9 hours 10 hours or maybe 12 hours a day or printers even less but ATMs run for 24 by 7 by 365 once they are installed they're there for the rest of their lives whatever that may be so if you are able to conserve energy on that ADM, it will translate into a tangible benefit for the organization, whosoever owns that ADM network. And if there are, you know, if you are able to uh, save maybe 100 to 150 kVA kilowatt hours per month, uh, that would translate into, you know, uh, maybe close to a megawatt uh, over a 100 ATM network. You see, very easily you could do that. What we have done is to find an alternative source for the ATM through solar panels, conventional solar panels and in that uh, there are two types of approaches that you could adopt. Uh, there is a hundred percent energy through the solar panels which of course is quite pricey because uh, uh, as soon as you touch the 1 kVA or above level, the technology uh, tends to get a little, you know, more expensive. So what we have done is instead of using the 100% uh, energy through the solar panels, we've taken a hybrid approach in which the energy will come through the utility as well as through the solar panels. So it will be used, the utility will be used only when uh, the solar power is not available. And it will actually, what will help technology is that uh, 8 hours of sunlight will actually allow it to run for 16 hours. And the utility will only be used for about 8 hours. So, two-thirds of your energy bill will be, you know, uh, through a sustainable and repeatable source, clean source. And, and we will uh, go ahead with this for actually facilities. With this approach, you could actually power up small offices having a load of about uh, 4 to 5 kVA or maybe a small bank branch. You could power up this entire branch through a hybrid technology of solar panel and utility and it will just keep going. Even if you know there is no sunlight during uh, the monsoon season or maybe the winter season, you would have the utility. So that would happen about you know 5% out of the whole year, 5% of the days, and 95% of the days you would be able to save 67% of your energy bill. Solar panels are not manufactured in Pakistan. There are, uh, uh, you know, two or three countries which uh, predominantly make all the solar panels, Japan, China, and Taiwan. So, I mean, they are working on this technology. R&D is, is continuously going on. And I think uh, time is not very far away when there will be, you know, tipping point where this will become feasible for everybody to acquire and install and use. I, I would admit that I have not delved into this area and, and done my research, but as of now, what I can see is that there is some politics involved on a global level, the oil companies uh, having their own pressure groups and, and not allowing the required R&D to go into alternative energy sources, one, one area is that. And uh, on the other side, since the R&D is not available and there is not a mass market uh, for this product, 
the price uh, tends to stay high. You know, if, if there is a, a high availability, if, you know, take the cell phones for example. They used to be, I, I bought my first cell phone for 30,000 rupees in, in 1992. And today you could buy it for 1,500 rupees. But that has only become possible when there are, you know, 100 million people using cell phones in Pakistan. So if there are 100 million people or maybe even 50 million people buying uh, solar panels, I, I can assure you that they will be very, very cheap, as cheap as, as buying a bulb or a tube light or something like that. What we are doing is we are talking about green energy and, and clean energy. This is the approach that we have adopted. with. Our UPS solutions from Schneider Electric and APC, what we do is allow our customers to have an efficient solution for their overall power requirements. For example, if, if for the same solution, if you would go into the market and ask anybody to give them a solution, they would propose a solution which is of higher power rating than what we can provide them we would tend to provide them a more efficient and, and we claim from the platform of Schneider Electric that we would provide a 40% more efficient solution to, uh, to our customers, okay? So if you are able to save energy up to 40%, you're actually helping green energy and clean energy, okay? By using less energy. This is one approach. The other approach is to find out alternative sources of energy like for instance the solar domain or the wind domain there are you know a couple of other domains but these are the you know uh, predominant uh, two alternatives available so we've picked on one uh, the solar one which actually suits uh, the technology uh, thing and uh, we're using these two uh, strategies there would be a greater adoption of uh, green energy in Pakistan. The only problem is that there are such overpowering problems in the country that things like green energy tend to get uh, a backseat. And you know, you have to be fighting for survival at times. So if everything goes well, even if you are able to just sustain yourself in businesses, we should be looking at very seriously at, at green energy because this will actually help bottom lines of all organizations, even of our household. I, I mean, I'm paying 10 times more you know, bills for electricity than I used to pay about two or three years ago. 10 times. I mean, this is very, very high. It doesn't make sense. So we've got to think about it. If you are able to save about 50% of this bill, this will actually translate into a very, very tangible benefit for everyone.